Welcome to Deployment Automation with Big Data Management. In this video, we will learn about the deployment best practices of Big Data Management and how it can be automated using external tools such as GitHub, Jira, and Jenkins. Application is a container within Big Data Management that allows users to deploy objects that are executable such as mappings and workflows from one Informatica domain to another Informatica domain. Applications are very lightweight objects and can be built and deployed from the Informatica's developer tool. An application has two phases in its life cycle, a design time and runtime. As part of the design time, an application maintains references to all the objects that the user would like to deploy. And when the application is deployed to the runtime, which is a data integration service, the application carries with it a copy of all those objects so that developers can continue to make their changes on the design time without impacting any mappings or executable objects that are executing on the runtime. A typical deployment process is as follows. There are various objects such as mappings, workflows, and parameter sets inside the model repository. When a developer is ready to move these to another environment or to an executable environment, they will create an application, add the mappings, workflows, and other objects into it. And this application can be deployed directly to a data integration service or it can be deployed to a file. This file is called as application archive file. The file can be stored in version control systems such as Git and eventually deployed to data integration service. This process can be repeated to deploy these mappings and other objects into various data integration services across various domains. Let's take a quick look at how such a flow can be automated using tools such as Jira and Jenkins. I'm going to first begin with what we call as a build process flow. As part of a build flow, a developer creates an application and then they create a Jira or some sort of a ticket inside their ticketing system to track the build request. This is typically approved by a build, re a build request administrator or also known as release manager. Once it's approved, a process is launched typically using a technology like Jenkins to initiate the build process. As part of this process, once the request is created from Jira, certain attributes are passed through this Jira ticket such as domain name, MRS, application name, a build number, or some sort of an internal reference number that the customers use to track these builds. These inputs are passed on to the Jenkins system, which will make a call to Informatica services to export the application to an IAR file, and then to push it to a version control system such as Git. This completes the build process. When it comes to deployment, a developer will create a deployment request, typically in a ticketing system such as Jira, which will go through an approval process. A build request administrator or a release manager would approve the request. And then a process in Jenkins is launched, which will do the automation of deploying the application archive file in the version control system into Informatica services. Now the way this would work is that as soon as a deployment request is created, the developer would typically provide the details of the deployment along with the build number. The build number that is provided here is the same internal reference number that is used as part of the build process flow. This is how we will be able to correlate a specific build request with one or more deployment requests. Now a Jenkins process gets launched which will pull the application from the gate or other version control system and then deploy them to a data integration service. Let's switch to a quick demo. This is the Informatica Big Data Developer Tool. Developers use this tool to build mappings, workflows, and other objects. What we have here on the screen is an application. It's currently called application underscore one. I have already added a couple of mappings as part of this application. Here you can see I have five different mappings added into this particular application. 
the application itself is saved inside a project within a folder within and this whole content is stored inside a MRS. Now as a developer, I will go to Jira and we have created some pre-built templates uh, of Jira here. And he you can see that I have a issue of type build, uh, build. And as part of this build request, I have provided a reference number, which is the build number here. And the details of where my application is, which is a domain name, MRS, the application's path and the application's name. Once this request is created, a notification goes to a release manager or a build manager. The build manager reviews the details and then clicks approve. And you will notice that as soon as it's approved, the request flows through Jenkins. We have a Jenkins and Jira plugin configured so that every time a build request or a deployment request is approved in Jira, Jenkins will be able to automatically pick the request up and then do the process. Here we can see that we are making a lot of progress in terms of the build process. And now the build request is complete. Now let's quickly open up the console output and then we can see that the status is successful. What we're doing is we're exporting the application file, application archive into your file and then this has been pushed into Git. And this is the Git path where it has been pushed. So now when I go to Git and if I refresh my page here, you will see that a new folder is created here and this is using the same reference number that we have provided inside the build request. And it has been just created a minute ago. So when I open it, I see the application archive file. So this application archive file has been exported from this model repository and then saved inside the Git. Now that's not enough. We want to be able to deploy this application into a data integration service so that we can execute MapEx. Let's see how we do that. I go back to Jira. As a developer, I would create a Jira request and this request is of type deployment. Here, I provide the domain name, data integration service, the application name that I'm deploying, and the bill number. Note that the bill number here has to match the bill number in the bill request because that is the reference to this particular location. All right, so as a developer, as soon as you create the request, a release manager reviews it and approves or rejects it. Now, before I click the approve there, I'm going to go back here and open another Jenkins flow. It's called deploy application to DAS. Now, as the release manager goes into the Jira ticket and then approves it, we will notice that a new request comes into Jenkins and the process remains the same, that we will be able to automatically take the attributes provided in Jira, act upon them, pull the application from the Git repository and deploy it into the data integration service. All right, here now we see that the build is successful. So let's go to Informatica's administrator console, applications, and I'm going to do a quick refresh. Oh, there we go. The application underscore 01 has been deployed to DAS underscore QA, which is what we have requested here for. Now, what if I want to deploy the same application to another data integration service? That's simple. Let's go and take a look at this DAS underscore prod. I don't have any applications here. So we will go to Jira. We will create a new request with the same details and just change the domain and the data integration service, but keep the build number to be the same. As soon as the request is submitted, a release manager will review and approve or reject the request. Once approved, this will trigger another execution of the Jenkins flow, which will process this request take the application archive file that is available in the Git repository and then deploy that application to the data integration service DAS underscore prod and it's complete and we can see that it is successful.
Now we go back to the Informatica Administrator Console and we see that this is the DS prod. We will refresh and now we can see that the application is deployed. It's already in a running state and all the five mappings that I have are ready for me to consume. All right, now let's take a closer look behind the scenes. Here we have this Jenkins applications that we have used, one to build the application and another to deploy. The build process that we have here is taking an application that we have on certain MRS, exporting it to an application archive file, and then exporting that or pushing that into a version control system such as Git. Now let's take a quick look at what's going on inside this flow. What we have here on the top is a bunch of parameters. Each of these parameters represents an attribute that we are going to receive from Jira. Now when I scroll down here, you can see that this particular Jenkins project is associated with Git and we have configured the URL and other credentials that are needed. Scrolling further down, we have configured the triggers with Jira. And the most important thing to note here is we're calling this project whenever the status inside the Jira is changed to approved from submitted state. And the issue type has to be of build request. Now this is the trigger, but what's happening when this trigger triggers this particular process flow? Very simple. We have a couple of shell scripts that we're executing here. One, to build the application. This script is going to export the application archive into a file. And then the next step is to push that into Git. It's as simple as that. Now let's take a closer look at what's going on inside these shell scripts. I'm going to open the info build application.sh. It's very simple. It's receiving a bunch of variables from Jenkins, which is assigning to environment variables. It's sourcing all necessary properties regarding an Informatica domain, just cleaning up the directories, create a brand new directory for this build request number, and then invoking the Informatica's infacmd.sh tools deploy application. The deploy application is called to specify the output directory where we want the application file to be created. That's it. Now let me go out of here and then show you what we have as part of this push application to get script. It's very simple. Again, it's receiving a bunch of variables from Jenkins, going to a specific directory, issuing a git add commit and then push. All right, so that's about the build process. Now let's go back to Jenkins and then take a look at what's happening on the deployment side. This is very similar to the build project. So what you can see here on the top is a number of attributes that we're receiving from Jira. Git being configured with this particular Jenkins project. A trigger is specified such that when the issue type is deployment request and the status changes from submitted to approved, we want this project to run. And what's going on inside here? Well, it's very simple. We're executing a git command to pull all the git uh, content and then executing a shell script called info deploy application. This shell script is taking the application archive file and deploying it to data integration service. Let's take a look at what's inside the shell script. It's very simple. It's receiving a bunch of variables from the Jenkins and assigning them to environment variables. If the application already pre-exists, we're stopping the application first, undeploying it, and then finally we're deploying the application to the specified data integration service. So as you can see here, there is literally nothing except for a bunch of NYCMD calls and by passing the variables or values that we're receiving from Jenkins, through, from Jira, through Jenkins, into the InfaCMD. In summary, big data management can be integrated with CA, CD, and DevOps technologies to build an end-to-end -end automation flow. You can integrate big data management with version control systems such as Git, ticketing and auditing systems such as Jira, and deployment and orchestration systems such as Jenkins. Thank you for watching this video.